Hi everyone, welcome back to Eleganza TV. I'm Eunice and today I'll be showing you how to cut and sew a stylish shirt with a zipper fly and side pockets. I'll take you through a step-by-step -step process on how to achieve a neat finishing. If you find this tutorial helpful, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up and turn on notification for more sewing tips and tutorials. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video and learn how to make this shirt. To begin making the shorts, I have this scrap fabric of 1.5 yards. You can make use of any fabric of your choice. And then I have this short zipper that is going to be for the front of the short pants. So this is all that I need for the shorts. And then next, we're going to be drafting the pattern of the shorts. So from the top of the pattern, I went ahead to rule a straight line. And that is going to be serving as my starting point. So I'll go ahead to take the necessary measurements I need for the shorts. So first of all, I'll be making use of the length of 17 inches. Go ahead to mark the length on your pattern like so. And then I'll also be taking the hip depth, which is the waist to hip length on my pattern paper. So that is 8 inches for me. So after getting this point, I'll be using my straight ruler to connect to form a straight line. So the next thing I'll be marking is my crouch line. For my crouch line, I'll be making use of my round hip measurement divided by 4. And that is 11 inches for me. So for my starting line, I went ahead to mark 11 inches. And then I'll use my straight ruler to connect to form a straight line. So this is all that you need for drafting the shorts. I've already gone ahead to label the patterns. I label the starting line, the waist the hip line, the crouch line, and then the short length. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to mark quarter of my hip measurement on my waistline. So quarter of my hip measurement is 11 inches, like I said before, and then I added half an inch for ease. So I'll be measuring what I have on the waist and I'll transfer it to the hip line. And then I'll also mark the same thing on my crouch line. So the point that I marked on the line, I'll use my straight ruler to connect them together. And then the next thing I'll be doing is from that middle line on the waist area, I'll be going in by 0 0.5 inch. Then I'll use my straight ruler to connect down to my hip line. So the next thing I want to do is to get my crouch extension for the front. I went ahead first of all to extend the line and then to get the crouch extension you're going to measure what you have on your hip line like so you divide it into two and then you're going to divide it again into another two so I have about 2.75 so where the straight line stops on my crouch area I will go out by 2.75 So after doing that, you'll be using your curve driller to connect from that crouch extension, which is a 2.75, straight to the hip line like so. If you don't have a curve driller, you can use your free hand to do this. So next, I'll be imputing my round body measurements. On the waistline, I'll take my waist measurements divided by 4, and that is 8 inches. Then I'll go ahead to mark one inch for that. If you want to fix it, that to the front part of your shorts, then you can do the same thing. So from that point, I'll use my curved ruler to connect to my hip line like so. So guys, the next thing I'll be doing is I'll come down from my waistline by one inch on the flap area. Then I'll use my ruler to connect that to the side part of my waist. So that part is going to be cut out. I'll just go ahead to cut it out right now so we don't get confused. So the next thing I'll go ahead to do now is to connect from the couch extension straight down to my short length. So after doing this, if you want your shorts to be fitted around your tie area, 
all you need to do is measure the roundness of your tie and divide it into two and place on your pattern paper but i don't want it to be fitted but what i'll just be doing is to go in by half an inch on the side part and i'll connect that to my hip line so guys if there's any part you don't quite understand just go ahead to rewatch the video and then you'll be able to get it so i'm just going ahead to make all the lines visible then i'll be cutting out my front shorts pattern so this is how the shorts looks i'm just going ahead to cross check my measurements to make sure that they are correct and then on the crotch line i'm measuring my lap measurement divided by two to be sure that it is not going to be too tight and that is okay so i'll be cutting out the shorts now this part now it has gone come down from the lap this part all you just need to do is measure wherever the length of the shorts is on your body then measure the roundness of it that's how you got this 28 hmm? that's how you got this 28 no this 28 now is for my lap okay so my lap divided by two is 14 so if you place the 14 now on the crouch it's going to be exactly it okay. so the only thing you need to do now, if you're making a fitted shorts or fitted pants you just need to measure where the shorts end now for example i'm making my shorts to be 6 17 inches long so when it stops here you measure the roundness of it okay let's say i have 22 now mm -hmm. you're going to divide that into two whatever measurements you're taking from your lap down to the bottom of your leg you're dividing by two it is only your waist and your hip that you're dividing by four when you come to trouser so this part now is 22 divided by two is going to be 11. so if you want it to be fitted all you just need to do is place 11 like so you can maybe get the, the midpoint of the line so you'll be able to place it well so this is 11 i'll just mark here mark here and then connect then connect so guys i just want to show you how to mark the dots so you're going to divide what you have on your waist into two equal halves and then you mark your point there then from that point you just rule a straight line to your hip line like so so after doing that you're going to measure 0 0.5 inch on both sides of the line and then you're going to get the length of the dart you're working with so i want the length of the dart to be 3.5 inches and then i'll use my ruler to connect from that length to both of the dots so this is how you're going to be fixing your dart on your front pattern so the next thing i'll be doing now is to place in another fresh pattern paper to cut out my back pattern so guys i went ahead to pin my front pattern on another pattern paper to draft out the back part so please i want you to pay attention when drafting this back part so you don't get lost so guys you can see the way i place the front part of the shorts on the pattern paper you're going to make sure that there is space to extend your crouch for the back pattern and there is also space on the top of the of the waistline to extend the back waist okay so first of all i'll be extending the front crouch line towards the back pattern So after extending it like so, I'll go ahead to mark two inches from where the front pattern stops. I'll extend it by two inches on the crouch line. And then from that two inch point, I'll come down by 0 0.5 inch. So I'll just mark that point there. And then on the middle part of the curved line on the crouch, I will go out by 0 0.5 inch. Then I'll also be marking a point there. So I'll go over to the top. You're going to place your tape from the middle part of the crouch on the front and to the dart point, okay? You can see the way I did it. You're going to get the midpoint from that middle part of the front crouch to your dart. And then from that point, you're going to go up by two inches. So I'll just be extending the side part of the front towards the back. Then after doing that, I will connect from that two inch I went to buy on the waistline to the side parts, okay? So guys, I'll just go ahead to explain again. You're going to measure from the middle part of the crouch line on your shorts to the midpoint of the darts. Then when you get that, you divide it into two. Then you're going to go up by two inches from that line. Then I extended that two inch I went to buy for the back. I extended it to the side parts. 
so the next thing i'm going to do now is to measure what i have on my waistline on the front and then from that two inch point you're going to measure it to get your back waist so i have nine inches as my front waistline i went ahead to measure the same nine inches for the back waistline so wherever the nine inches stops is going to be my back waistline so the next thing i'll be doing now is to connect that to my hip line like so so i'll just go ahead to rule the same shape that i have for the front pattern onto the back pattern like so okay and then the next thing i'll be doing is from the back extension crouch extension you're going to connect it to the short length like so so guys this is how the back pattern she looks feel free to ask any questions in case you're confused in any area or you can rewatch the video to understand clearly so i'll take out my front pattern now so the next thing i'll be doing now is to connect the points that you see on the pattern paper to get the crouch line for my back So guys, this is how the back pattern should look when you're done. The next thing I'll be doing now is to cut out the pattern. So I'll also be fixing the dart on the back waist. So you're going to get the midpoint of the waist like so, and then really a straight line towards the hip line. Then after doing that, I'll go ahead to mark 0.5 inch on both sides of the line. And then I'll be making the length of the dart to be 4 inches. Then I'll connect the both points together to form my dart shape. So guys, this is how my front and the back pattern of the shorts looks. The next thing I'll be doing now is to cut out the pockets. So for the pocket, I'm going to make the length to be 10 inches and then the wideness on the bottom is going to be 7 inches. And then on the top, I'll be making it 5 inches. So I'll just use my stretch ruler to connect from the 5 inch point to the 7 inch point on the bottom. Then the next thing I'll be doing is to measure 2.5 inch on the bottom and also on the side like so. Then I'll be connecting both points together to form a curve. So it is just simple like this. So I'll go ahead to cut out the shape of the pocket. So on the straight part, I'm just indicating that it is going to be cut on fold. And I'll be cutting two pieces of it for both sides of the pocket. So the next thing I want to do now is to cut my zipper fly. So the zipper fly has two parts and the both of them is going to be 7 inches long. So I went ahead to measure 7 inches on my pattern and then I'll rule really a straight line. Then I'll measure 1.5 inch on the top and then 1 inch on the bottom. Then I'll use my straight ruler to connect the both points together. So this is going to be for one part of the zipper fly. I'm also indicating that the straight part is also going to be folded. I'll be cutting just one piece of it, but it is going to be on fold. So after cutting that part out, I'll go ahead to cut out the second part of the zipper fly. So I'll just really a straight line to make the pattern to be straight. And then I'll measure 1.5 inch on the top and also on the bottom. So remember that the length is still going to be 7 inches long. So I'll just go ahead to rule a straight line on that point. And then I'll draw a curve on the bottom. So I'm just going to measure 1 inch on both sides of the bottom and on the other side. Then I'll just connect the both of them to form a curve like so. So I'll be cutting out this part out. For this second part of the zipper fly, I'm just going to be cutting just one piece of it. So guys, I went ahead to cut out all the pattern pieces on my fabric. As you can see, I cut on the back and the front part of the short with half an inch seam allowance on the side. But then on the bottom, I added two inches for folding allowance. 
so i also cut my pocket i cut two pieces of it and the straight part is on fold then i added half inch seam allowance all around and then for the zipper fly for both sides i said one part is going to be on fold and then the other side i would cut in just one piece of it and as you can see i also added half inch seam allowance all around it so this is my front pattern before i take out the pattern i want to first of all notch the dart area so this is totally optional you can choose to cut it open like you see me doing or you can just go ahead to draw out the line of the dart on your fabric but this is just going to be easy for me to know where the dart line is going to be so after taking out my pattern i went ahead to open up the shorts and then next thing i'll be doing now is to fix the dart so the notched part that i have i'm just going to sew my dart with half an inch and slant it to the end so after pinning down the dart i will take it over to my sewing machine to fix so this is for the back part i'll also be doing the same thing for the dart area I'll cut it open so it will be easy for me and where the dart is going to stop. So after taking out the pattern for the back, I'll go ahead to fix the darts as well. So this is the front part. After sewing the darts, I'll be ironing it later on. So first of all, I want to fix the pocket to the side part. So I cut my pocket into two. Like I said, this is going to be for both sides of the pocket. So I'll be showing you how to fix the pocket on one side of the shot. Then I'll do the other one off camera. So you're going to place the side part of your shorts to the side of the pocket like so. And then I'll use my pin to hold it down together. So after doing that, this is how it's going to look on both sides. Then on the starting line, which is the waist part, I'll go ahead to mark 2 inches. And then for the length, I'll be making it 7 inches. So from that 7 inches length, I'll use my straight ruler to slant it to the 2 inches on the waist part. So that line that I marked on the side part of the shot, I'll take it over to my sewing machine to stitch it down. So guys, yeah, this is it after sewing. I'll trim out the excess and remaining half an inch. So the next thing I'll be doing is to top stitch on the pocket facing part. So you're going to push the seam allowance to the pocket side and then you top stitch them together. You can either do this or you fold your pocket and your short side together and top stitch both of them so depending on what you want but this is how i want mine to be so after doing this i'll go ahead to fold in the top stitch part and then use my pin to hold it together so guys this is what i have it looking like i'll turn it over to the other side and then fold the pocket facing like so you're going to fold it to be equal and then you stitch the bottom part so i'll take it over to my sewing machine and do that right now so guys after doing that i turn it over to the front like so you can see that there is excess on the waist part so i will be trimming that out after fixing the pocket for the other side i will place the boats of the front together and then trim out the excess So let's move on to the back part of the shorts. So guys, right here is the back part of the shorts after fixing my darts. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to join the flab area. So you're going to place the both side of the back front side facing each other, just like I've done here. And then I'll go ahead to pin the um, crouch area. So I'll take it over to my sewing machine to stitch with 0.5 inch. So this is how to fix your zipper fly for your shorts. 
I placed the two pieces of the zipper fly on my fabric to cut with half an inch seam allowance. On one side, the fabric is going to be on fold and the other side is just going to be one piece. Then I also went ahead to iron interfacing to the both of them. So I'll be placing this single piece on the shorts like so and then I'll pin it to sew with half an inch. From the beginning of the tutorial, I already showed you how to cut your zipper fly. So in case you missed that, just go ahead to watch it again. So after sewing that part, I will also turn it over to top stitch on the facing part, the facing of the zipper fly. So guys, I've gone ahead to do what I explained. I joined the sides together and then top stitch towards the facing of the zipper fly. So what I'll be doing next now is to fix my zipper. So I have this short zipper that I'm going to be fixing on. So guys, you're going to place the front side of your zipper face down like this and make sure that it gets to the end of the zipper fly like so. Then I'll be stitching on the other side. So I'll just use my pin to secure it so the zipper will not move when I want to sew. So guys, just watch closely and see the way I'm doing it. So I went ahead to stitch down the zipper just like the way I explained on the other side of the facing, okay? So after doing it, this is what you should have it looking like. So after sewing, you're going to place your zipper like so. It should be covered very well. So the next thing I want to do now is to top stitch on the front side. So again, I'll be using my pin to hold down the zipper and the fabric together. So make sure your zip is completely covered like so. So the next thing I want to do, like I said, is to top stitch on the front part of the shorts. So I'll be using this paper that I cut out for my zipper fly as a guideline. I'll be following the shape. I'll be sewing along the shape of the paper. So I'll take it over to my sewing machine to explain more better. So I'll be placing it on my shorts to top stitch, but the pattern looks too wide for the curve. So I'll just go ahead to trim out a bit from it following the same shape. So I'm going to use the paper to get the shape. So I'm just going to place the paper from the midpoint of the zip and then you're going to be just top stitching on the side part, okay, not on top of the paper. If you're good with curves, then there is really no need to make use of the paper. I'm just using it as a guideline to make my curve part to come out well. So guys, this is how it's going to look like after you finish top stitching it, okay? So guys, you saw the way I used the paper to top stitch on the fabric to get my curve. And then as I was sewing, I lifted up the end of the zipper like so. You can see the way I'm doing it right now. So that the top stitch will not be on top of the other side of the zipper. So this is how it's going to look like when you're done. So next thing I'm going to do now is to notch the point where the zipper stops. This is totally optional. You can choose to leave it like so. But I just want to notch it so that I will know where my joining of the flap is going to end. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to fix the other side of the zipper fly. So you're going to place your zipper on top of the folded parts like so. So ensure that it is equal with the waistline. So I went ahead to use my pins to hold the zipper and the zipper fly together. So I'll take it over to my sewing machine and top stitch towards the side. So guys, after sewing, this is how it looks so far on the inside and on the front part. So the next now I'll be doing is to bring back the other side of the shorts. So on the other side, I'll go ahead to measure where the zipper is going to stop. So you're going to place the both side waist together and then you measure where the zipper is going to stop. So I'll just go ahead to notch that point. So after notching it like so, I'll be folding the top part to top stitch on the side of the zipper. So you can first of all go ahead to fold it and top stitch on your machine so it can be relaxed or you can just go ahead to place it 
on the side part of the zipper and top stitch very closely to the teeth of the zip. So guys, I wanted to take it step by step. So I first of all went ahead to top stitch the folded part. Then I would bring it close to the side of the zipper and then make sure that the waist is equal together on both sides. And then you're just going to um, take it close to the teeth of the zipper and then top stitch on the initial line. So guys, I hope you understand what I've done. In case you don't quite understand, you can just go ahead to rewatch the video again. So this is how the zipper fly looks. The next thing I'll be doing now is to join the down part of the couch. So there are different ways to do it. You can just fold it and top stitch on top of each other like so. Or you can go ahead to join them together. You place the both notched points together and then join with half an inch to the end. So after joining the crouch area on the front, I went ahead to top stitch it as well. So this is how the shot looks so far. You're definitely going to be weaving the inside of the seam to make it neat. So the next thing I want to do is to trim the excess that we have on the waist, the excess pocket that we have on the waist. So I'm going to fold the front parts together like so and then trim out the excess. So next, I'll bring out the back part of the shorts and then I'll be joining the bottom of the shorts together like so. So make sure that the seam line on the crotch and on the front and the back are on the seam line. Then you're just going to pin to the end on both sides of the leg. So after doing that, I'll take it over to my sewing machine and stitch with half an inch seam allowance. So guys, after doing that, I'll also be stitching the side part of the shorts. So you're going to place the both sides of the front and the back to be equal. And then you stitch with half an inch seam allowance as well. So after stitching the both sides of the shorts, the next thing I'll be doing now is to hem the bottom part. So you can choose to weave it first before you hem it or you fold it into two. So remember that I added 2 inch sewing allowance on the hem when I was cutting it. So I'll go ahead to fold in 2 inch allowance on the bottom. So after doing that, the next thing I'll be doing now is to fix the band for the waist of the shorts. So you're just going to measure what you have on the waist, okay? So I have exactly 34 inches. So I measured from one side of the zipper fly to the other side and I have 34 inches as the whole of my waist. So you're going to measure what you have as the roundness of your waist. Then you're going to add 0.5 inch sewing allowance to turn the both ends. Then for the wideness of the band, I made use of 4 inches. So you're going to fold one side of the band and then fold it again. But it is not going to be equal because you'll be sewing on one side to your shorts. So you're just going to fold the band like so and get the midpoint. So you're also going to get the midpoint of the shorts. And in my case, the midpoint is the back. So I'll be placing the midpoint of the band to the midpoint of the shorts. And then I'll use my pin to hold it down. Then I'll continue pinning the band to the waist till I get to the end on both sides. So guys, I forgot to mention that you need to add interfacing to your band fabric. So I added ST as the interfacing. You can make use of any interfacing of your choice. So after pinning it to the end, I have 0.5 inch allowance remaining that I've said I'm going to use to turn the both ends. So I went ahead to stitch the band on the waist and then the next thing I'll be doing is to turn it over. Then I'll place the both folded parts on both ends like so. Then I'll be stitching it down. So 
so guys after turning the both ends you're going to have it looking neat like this when you turn it over and then all you need to do is top stitch the folded part of the band and then cover up the the rough part on the waist okay so this way my band is going to be looking neat on the outside and on the inside So guys, this is how the shorts look with the zipper fly and the band looking very neat. So all you need to do is fist button and button O to the band. So I'll be fitting the short so you can see how it looks on me. So guys, this is how the short looks on me. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this particular tutorial helpful, please do well to like, drop a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in another tutorial.